So the first badass of history that I want to talk about is Nikola Tesla. Now, I know that you've probably heard of the car company Tesla, but make no mistake that Nikola Tesla, the genius that brought us the current standard for electrical power generation across the world, is far greater than anything Milan, Milan anything Elon Musk will ever do, or has and done, for that matter. It looks like we might have lost... Light bulb. Hmm. We might have lost Lance. Are you still there, Lance? Or catonic. Oh. Well, well, we'll just keep going. The show must go on. The but, show must uh, go on indeed. But I do want to uh, say, Dylan, you are wrong. He is not the uh, original hey, inventor of the light bulb. The original can you inventor... hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, my we screen hear stopped. You, yes. Okay. It, it was buffering and everything was just Please moving in you. circles. You're good now. Okay. Uh, you are back. So let's continue on. I don't see my camera uh, on the stream, though. I just wanted to correct Dylan there real There's quick. a delay. Uh, You're back. Nikola okay. Tesla was not credited with in any way, shape, or form with the invention of the light bulb. He invented better power techniques than Edison did to power the light bulbs that he invented, although the light bulb was a stolen invention. Yeah. Oh. Agreed. Huh. But we're not... We're getting on a little bit of a tangent. But, uh... It's still, it's still poignant. So I'm probably going to mess up this town name, but regardless of that... Uh, Nikola Tesla was born in 1856 in Smiljan, Croatia. Smiljan, Croatia. Croatia. Smiljan, Croatia. Smiljan. It's apparently located six kilometers northwest of Gospic and 15 kilometers from the Zagreb split highway. I have it up there on the map. I'll zoom out a little bit so you can kind of see where it's at in the world. It's across the way from Italy. In Croatia. So, Tesla studied math and physics at the Technical University of Graz and philosophy at the University of Prague. In 1882, while on a walk, he came up with the idea of a brushless AC motor. AC meaning alternating current, uh, which is different than what Edison was doing. So, Edison was all direct current, and we'll get into this of why AC is better for uh, our standard than what DC is. But, uh, also, without these two men, we would not have the most overrated rock band in the world, ACDC. Well, there you go. Definitely overrated. But anyway, so he came up with the idea for a brushless AC motor, making the first sketches of its rotating electromagnet or electromagnets in the sand of the path that he was walking on. So just give you an idea of what he was uh, drawing here. And the Sorry, main I don't thing... Speak robot. So the way, the way that this ends up working is that uh, overall the... Uh, and maybe I can do the draw box. Oh, I can't because I didn't add it in. But essentially AC works in such a way that it goes to in a sine wave and I'm kind of trying to draw it on here in an imaginary way from positive to negative and it has usually multiple phases so that this rotating component is constantly being subject to positive negative positive negative positive negative which then pushes it around in a circle. And you can use the same concept to create a generator, which the generator can obviously create voltage. So anyway, he came up with this as he was on a walk. And that is the main way that we, uh, in industry, make all kinds of things. We pump things with uh, electric motors. We do all kinds of stuff with electric motors. But anyway, continuing on. Later that year, he moved to Paris and got a job repairing direct current power plants, or DC, with the Continental Edison Company. Two years later, he immigrated to the United States. Tesla arrived in New York in 1884 and was hired as an engineer at Thomas Edison's Manhattan headquarters. He worked there for a year, impressing Edison with his diligence and ingenuity. At one point, 
Edison told Tesla he would pay $50,000, which in today's money would be over a million dollars. I think it's like $1.1 million, somewhere in that range, for an improved design for his DC dynamos. So let's uh, take a quick look at what this dynamo looks like. There's no sound in this uh, video, but this is a DC dynamo, or we call them generators now. They're kind of just rotating this, I assume, in, you know, uh, SolidWorks or some sort of a 3D modeling software. Just to uh, give you exact figures here, $50,000 in 1888 is $1,538,400 today. That is quite a bit. Oh, uh, inflation. Indeed. So after months of experimentation, <laughs> Tesla presented a solution and asked for the money. Edison demurred, saying, Tesla, you don't understand American humor. <laughs> so I have a quick clip here. And then he kept the money and the invention anyway. Why, of course. I have because a bit of, of a clip here that kind of explains this. He was hired by Thomas Edison to do basic electrical engineering, but moved up to redesigning the direct current generators that ran Edison's business. Edison offered Tesla $50,000, or about $1.1 million in today's currency, to make these improvements. After completing this assignment, Tesla asked about the payment for his work. Edison didn't pay out the money. He claimed that he wasn't serious about the payment, that Tesla didn't understand American humor. Tesla eventually left Edison's company and partnered with George Westinghouse in 1888 to commercialize his system of alternating current. The problem here is that alternating current competed with direct current, which Thomas Edison built his entire monopoly on. Thus begun the War of the Currents. So we're going to talk briefly here war of the currents. about the War of the Currents, or the Battle of the That's Currents. Badass, just so saying. in 1887 and 1888, uh, Tesla was granted more than 30 patents for his inventions and in was invited to address the American Institute for Electrical Engineers on his work. His lecture caught the attention of, like he said uh, in the video there, George Westinghouse, the inventor who had launched the first AC power system near Boston and was Edison's major competitor in, like he said there, the Battle of the Currents. Westinghouse obviously hired Tesla, licensed the patents for his AC motor, and gave him his own lab. In 1890, Edison arranged for a convicted New York murderer, and this is Edison, Obviously, he wanted to try to sway the public into not wanting AC, right? So he actually arranged for a convicted New York murderer to be put to death on an AC-powered electric chair, a stunt designed to show how dangerous the Westinghouse uh, standard could be. So um, we shall give a quick look at some of Edison's sabotage on that note Nightmare. i'm going to take my leave for a moment i should be back in about 20. all right sounds good i'll see y'all shortly everybody assumed that edison would get the contract to wire it and to power the first world's fair powered by electricity um actually let's go back to that other view hold on because the other one uh really kind of shows a little bit of the sabotage here. Let me skip forward a little bit. Went so far as to electrocute a circus elephant in public, an alternating current, trying to scare people away from using it. He spread false information about it, lobbied against its use, and went so far as to electrocute a circus elephant in public. Basically, Edison was a jerk. Direct current had plenty of its own faults. It was the cause of death of countless children and created numerous house fires, also, the maximum reach of direct current was about two miles, which meant a substation had to be built to continue the current. Hey guys, I'm to this day, they would still be building issues. substations. Um, I'm going to get that fixed real quick. It's going to require me just rebooting something real quick. My thing keeps on popping in and out. Okay. We're just going to continue on, man. All right, yeah. Just continue on. I'll probably be back before you're done with this. They were going to get electricity across the U.S. Tesla's alternating current could go for hundreds of miles. Lights running on alternate current were bright white, unlike dull yellow lights running on direct current. Eventually, Edison had to give in to the demands of the people and had to go with alternating current. Tesla's influence spreads much further than electricity. 
He had over 700 patents and came up with ideas such as robots, spark plugs, the electric art lamp, an x-ray device, bladeless turbines, wireless communication, laser technology, neon lights, remote control, cellular communication, radio, electrical bath to remove germs, radar, and much more. Tesla died from heart failure in a room of the New York Hotel on January... Which we'll get onto that in a bit. But let's... Uh, so, essentially, there was this... Uh, I guess there was this large uh, exposition that was done in New in uh, Chicago, and it was called the World's Fair. And this uh, next video goes over and talks about how uh, Tesla and also Westinghouse were given that contract. So let's give that a look. And to everyone's surprise, Westinghouse using Tesla's patents won the contract. And I think to really appreciate how important that moment was, you have to think back to what it was like at that time. The only way to light your home was with a candle or with a gas lamp. So you come to the World's Fair and flash, I mean, literally 100,000 light bulbs lit up. I mean, nothing like this had ever been seen before. It was- I invite everybody, by the way, I've read a book on uh, the World's Fair that also has like a another section that is <laughs> a work of fiction. Uh, well, it's historical fiction. It's called The Devil in the White City. Excellent book, by the way. Um, but essentially, half of the book is talking about the engineering feat of the World Fair or the World's Fair uh, of this same exact time. And essentially, not only was it this engineering feat for Tesla and for Westinghouse to light the fair, there was also this huge uh, breakthrough in, in, in architectural engineering where the majority of the area that all of these buildings that you see here were built was on kind of sandy and swampy ground. So they developed this method that is still used uh, today um, and they essentially built these, uh, or they, they drilled down into the, uh, kind of like sandy earth and created these, uh, just pillars of concrete to support the, uh, the foundations of these buildings, which was kind of interesting because actually these buildings were torn down. They weren't even permanent buildings. They built all of this just for this World's Fair. And then it wasn't even like five or 10 years later, it was already back to, you know, uh, and, and who knows, maybe they ended up building other buildings after that. But this whole World's Fair was torn down shortly after the World's Fair was over. They didn't even keep it there. Oh. And, uh, so uh cash potato gaming thanks for joining us yeah we're talking about the battle of the currents and uh just kind of like we're we're to the point right now where we're talking about nikola tesla and his life and he's one of the badasses of history that we're talking about but i just wanted to bring up a few points that i had read this uh, book called the devil in the white city that goes into uh, a lot of detail into the world's fair so let's uh, keep on with this it's truly transformational by the time Thomas Edison returned from the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, he was in a rage. He counterattacked Tesla's success by launching a brutal smear campaign, one of the nastiest in the history of American industry. Edison had already lost, but he didn't accept it. Edison published pamphlets that warned about the dangers of AC power. His associates electrocuted dogs man. and horses and even an elephant on the streets of New York Gross. to try to convince people that AC power was too dangerous and should not be used. In addition to executing animals, Edison promoted the idea of an AC-powered electric chair to provoke fear about the dangers of Tesla's AC current. Complete fucking ridiculous, But the campaign man. of terror could not derail Ow. the brilliance of Tesla's work. Undeterred and in possession of the superior technology, Westinghouse and Tesla set out to light America. To do that, they needed a power source, and Tesla had an audacious one in mind. He wanted to harness the power of Niagara Falls and ship it south to Buffalo, New York. 
What they essentially did was carve 100-foot vertical shafts in the rocks for water to fall down and then spin turbine blades and create electricity. He started with 8 million volts there, which at the time was considered astounding. The plant opened on August 25th, 1895, and provided power until it was shut down in 1961 to make room for its successor just a few miles down the river. But the basic solutions Tesla came up with are still in use today. Yep, we still use many of those solutions today. And um, so just to kind of like continue on with some of the inventions, uh, so he invented electric oscillators, meters, improved lights, and high, the high voltage transformer known as the Tesla coil. He also experimented with x-rays, gave short range demonstrations of radio communication two years before, uh, now my, I might mess up this name here, but Guglielmo Marconi, and piloted a really radio controlled boat around a pool in Madison Square Garden. So if you don't know what an oscillator is, this is what's called the earthquake machine. Um, and it's uh, quite interesting. So let's give that a look. The look. Tesla earthquake machine was a mechanical oscillator, which is basically a machine that produces vibrations. And by producing these vibrations, the machine could be made to resonate with different structures. The oscillator machine is based on the principle that every substance, when stimulated, has a resonant frequency. If the frequency is matched and amplified by an outside force, such as the oscillator machine, any material can be literally shaken to pieces. The destruction Hopefully of the Tacoma Narrows better now. Bridge I do in Washington in 1940. The on the Demi now you're fine. Uh, we're looking at oscillator machines right now. Straight at this principle. The winds whipping around the bridge hit just the right frequency, causing the steel bridge to sway violently in a rhythmic pattern that finally broke it apart. Got him. To demonstrate the power of resonance, we're going to see what happens to a wine glass as it vibrates to its breaking point. First, I'll start the glass vibrating and use a microphone connected to an oscilloscope to see what frequency the glass vibrates at. I'll then set that frequency on a signal generator, which is going to play it back through an amplifier into a speaker. Because the glass is going to be moving more than 400 times per second, we will be using a strobe light in order to slow down the motion. Now, this is going to be loud, so I have to wear some protection. As the vibrations increase in intensity, the glass will start to move more and more, and eventually it can't take it anymore. So as I turn up the volume, the glass will break. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Look at that glass. <laughs> Boom. So what we saw was like a mini earthquake, and Tesla's earthquake machine would be able to do this, but on a much larger scale. So that was one of his inventions as well. So, um... That literally shook apart steel, one of the most right. densest metal known to man. Right. And so, like, another one of his, of his uh, really awesome inventions here. Oh, why is in the 1800s, Spotify popping that's up? That's really impressive. He did all this in the 1800s. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so let's wow. check this out. The, the famous Tesla coil. So just giving an idea here, this was uh, over 3 million volts that they're testing this uh, Tesla coil here. Look at that. Just for scale, like you can see down over at the bottom here, of course now the tat or the bar is covering it up. But that's how tiny the people are. They're only probably like fifty to sixty feet away from this. So like this is how gigantic this uh this Tesla coil is.
This is just the first test. And they have another one. It comes up and they show... So this is where they show this uh, spot. So if you know basic electricity, all electricity is looking for a pathway to ground. So um, the way that Tesla was able to have all of these famous photos of him sitting by, um, you know, these Tesla coils with all of this kind of lightning essentially going around him is that he was right next to a ground and... Uh, this here is kind of showing here that this paper doll or whatever is completely protected by this umbrella that is a direct pathway to ground. So let's give that a look. Anybody in chat, would you, uh, would you come over and uh, stand under there? Would you feel safe? <laughs> And then this is the, the final 210,000 watts. Freaking crazy. So just something, if people are wondering, it's like, what's, what's the overall point, right? What's the point of the Tesla coil? So just as a brief explanation here, Tesla was able to demonstrate that you can actually transmit um, electricity throughout the air. Like he uh, had many famous demonstrations where he was holding a light bulb in his hand while he was transmitting voltage through the air and the light bulb while holding it in his hand would light up. And this was particularly uh, dangerous to all of those people who, uh, and companies that transmitted, you know, all of the electricity to uh, various households in the same way that we uh, do that today. So there was a lot of sabotage to essentially try to um, just make Tesla seem to be a fraud, right? He wanted to give this to everybody for free. He wanted to give these technologies to people for free. Well, in a capitalist society, that doesn't work very well. Uh, so... No, yeah, because that's communism. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm just saying that um, Tesla really in his whole entire life did not benefit very much from his technologies. And this is kind of a theme in the badasses that I chose personally from history, because all of the badasses that I chose from history, uh, well, I guess it's just two, but even beyond what I'm going to present today, those people did it for the sake of doing it. They didn't do it for profit. They didn't do it because they wanted the renown or the uh, the fame. They did it because it would help the world. And uh, they weren't looking at it from a profit perspective. They just wanted to make the world a better place. So just in Science. conclusion here, you know, to me, that makes you the biggest badass, right? Like to me, and I'm just saying it's opinion. I get it. But that makes you an extreme badass to want to do something to just make the world better instead of doing something for fame or doing it for renown or doing it for money, just doing it for the sake of doing it and being a good person. Okay. Well, that, I mean, and, and he made, I mean, these inventions that, that he made led to 
uh, led to a huge tree, uh, a sprouting tree of many other things. And right. like what, um, uh, like, like what, um, Mike said, um, you know, there's, you know, we wouldn't have a lot of this stuff today because, um, if it weren't for the, if it weren't for Nikola Tesla's work, right. but yeah, it's, I, I, but I, I, what I did not know though, I didn't realize that, that Thomas Edison was that elaborate to oh, sabotage. Yeah. Him. I, th- I thought I was, I thought I was under the impression that he just stole his, he, his idea. Cause like you said, capitalist society right. and then given, you know, all that kind of junk. But I didn't realize that he like actually like legitimately made a, uh, a slight, a smear campaign and also executed animals just to make his inventions look like they're made for mass destruction and, and loss of life, which is yep. completely, which is, which, which, you know, it's, it's Mark, just like yeah. technology. Technology <laughs> is not the one that's destroying society. It's humans themselves <laughs> doing it. Right. But uh, yeah, and I agree with all of your sentiments there. But uh, just to conclude here. So moving on uh, in 1895, Tesla's New York lab burned, destroying years worth of notes and equipment. And this is known as a complete and other travesty in the scientific community. There were so many things that we lost in that fire. Like, I don't know that it's as uh, big of a loss as, say, the uh, uh, burning of the Library of Alexandria, which we'll get into later with uh, Lance's uh, or, or Catonic subject. I, I actually know about that one. But, yeah, like, this was a major loss. So many inventions that would have benefited society today, even, and would have pushed us uh, further in technology were lost that day. But uh, let's, he secured backing after, uh, so he returned to New York in 1900 by J.P. Morgan and began building a global communications network centered on a giant tower at Warden Cliff in Long Island. But funds ran out and Morgan balked at Tesla's grandiose schemes. Tesla lived his last decades in a New York hotel, working on new inventions, even as his energy and mental health faded. His obsession with the number three and fastidious washing were dismissed by the eccentricity, or excuse me, eccentricities of genius. He spent his final years feeding, and he claimed communicating with the city's pigeons. So kind of a very sad end to a complete and utter badass of history that is all i have uh today on nikola tesla